Hi, this is Code Practices with InfoPulse Experts. So far, we have reviewed all significant features of Playwright and PyTest needed for web test automation testing. And the only ingredient left is practice. I encourage you to start doing test automation on the projects your teams are working on to begin improving quality today. Nevertheless, there are still tips and tricks I would like to share. Whenever you are starting a test automation project, define the goals you want to achieve and the deadlines. For instance, we need to automate the regression test suite to cover stable software features. At least 100 tests should be developed, running, and green in three months. We need automated API tests for the dev team to be executed on each build to let them know their changes did not break a thing. Expecting integration to CI in two sprints. We need an automatic quality gate before releasing to UAT. A few dozens of E2E tests. We'll check the progress in a month. Goals will help you to focus on specific test cases to be developed first. Mind the pyramid of tests. The most typical mistake a test automation team can make is to start by automating the most complex and longest end-to-end -end scenarios. But do not just chase after the test quantity. For each end-to-end -end scenario, there should be a few simpler and faster tests of system and integration levels, and even more unit tests, even though it is usually not a test team's responsibility. Cooperate with the dev team, because the whole team is responsible for the software quality. Time spent on test execution is important. No matter how cool your tests are, if it takes a while to run them, they are likely to be skipped or executed rarely. So always try to have some quick tests as a separately marked group to make them useful. Moreover, if you have tests that cannot be executed independently, make sure you run them separately under controlled conditions just not to mess them up. Unfortunately, test automation is often overrated, but it is not a magic pill and can't fix bad quality. It is just one of the means to measure it. So, define your test automation goals and periodically check how close you are to achieving them. It can be a mature decision to admit that the chosen test automation approach just does not work, and it is better to stop now to save time. Do not forget to work on lessons learned to avoid such mistakes in the future. Personally, in addition to goals, I would recommend always calculating ROI, return on investment, of test automation to be honest with stakeholders and yourself about how long it will take to do the work and when it will deliver benefits. If you want to know how to calculate ROI, ask in the comments, and we may record another video about it. It is okay not to try to do all the work yourself, especially if you are new to test automation. Do not hesitate to request help. IT is a big and open community. The smart move would be to request a test assessment of the software, to get the list of the recommended tools, approaches and plans, or even let the professionals do the work for you. And guess what? Our company InfoPulse provides such services, and we will do our best to measure and improve your software quality. Many times in my career, I have struggled with complicated tests that were hard to automate. However, I gained precious experience which taught me that there can be shortcuts for every complicated case. Do not hesitate to ask your front-end developers to introduce test IDs, meaningful class names, and useful JavaScript functions to get information about the state of the system. Do not hesitate to ask your back-end developers to ask for service API, to simplify operations or even do impossible things. For instance, if you need to test user registration but there is no option to delete users, request such API for a test environment only. Thank you for watching. If you have your own tips and tricks, do not hesitate to share them in the comments. Be safe and support Ukraine.